A 32 year old male patient came to ENT emergency complaining of severe dysphagia that is difficulty in soloing and also torticollis. He kept his neck towards one side, difficulty to turn his neck. And on asking, he gave an history of accidental ingestion of a chicken piece one week back. And he said uh, he had some balls, food balls or something after uh, this accidental ingestion and he thought it has gone uh, inside, gone to his stomach and there was a very minimal foreign body sensation along with pain in the throat which progressed to this level. So I took an uh, x-ray soft tissue neck lateral view. This is an x-ray soft tissue neck lateral view uh, showing straightening of cervical vertebra along with the widening of the retropharyngeal space. So the diagnosis from the x-ray itself is an acute retropharyngeal abscess. So this retropharyngeal abscess is collection of pus in the retropharyngeal space. So today I am going to explain what is this retropharyngeal space, what are its boundaries, its relations, its content and uh, the important clinical uh, significance of this retropharyngeal space. And after that we will uh, go with the retropharyngeal abscess, what are the types of retropharyngeal abscess, what are the clinical features and how, how to treat the retropharyngeal abscess. Okay, both are very important. I have already explained on the parapharyngeal abscess, peritonsillar, uh, parapharyngeal space, peritonsillar space etc. And uh, they are all neck spaces and this retropharyngeal space is one of the deep neck spaces. Okay, so retropharyngeal space. It is actually uh, a deep neck space which lies between the middle and the deep layer of deep cervical fascia. And uh, as already the name signifies, it is retropharyngeal. That means what? It is retro or behind the pharynx, pharyngeal spaces. Right? So actually, uh, this one is an axial section at the level of uh, esophagus. This one, esophagus. And this is, uh, sorry, this is uh, trachea and this is esophagus. Okay. Trachea and esophagus. And over that lies the thyroid gland. Okay. This is thyroid. And what comes here? Uh, internal jugular vein. Then external uh, carotid artery. And... Uh, Vagus now that is carotid sheath. Okay. So here it is the carotid sheath here and cervical vertebra. So in between this uh, uh, muscles of pharynx, pharyngeal musculature and the prevertebral muscles. In, in this space is a retropharyngeal space. So from this you know this this space, retropharyngeal space lies posterior to the pharyngeal muscles that is pharynx and also the esophagus and it is anterior to the prevertebral fascia so uh, prevertebral muscles and also covering that comes the prevertebral fascia okay so anterior relation is or anterior boundary is the buccopharyngeal fascia and posteriorly it is the uh, prevertebral fascia and again so this space is the retropharyngeal space and a thin layer of prevertebral fascia is called the alar fascia which extends between the uh, carotid sheath on either side okay so this actually divides this uh, uh, retropharyngeal space into a true retropharyngeal space and a danger space. Okay, so the retropharyngeal space is divided again in by the alar fascia. Alar fascia is a very thin layer of prevertebral fascia which extends between the two carotid sheath. Okay, and that divides this into alar fascia divides the uh, retropharyngeal space into a true retropharyngeal space and also a danger space okay
So a true retropharyngeal space and a danger space. Okay. So what are the boundaries? The anteriorly it is the uh, pharynx and esophagus covered by the visceral fascia which is called the buccopharyngeal fascia and posteriorly it is by the prevertebral fascia and on both sides there is carotid sheath laterally there is carotid sheath and this uh, uh, retropharyngeal space is again divided by the alar fascia into a true retropharyngeal space which is anteriorly placed and posteriorly there is a danger space so it will be more uh, easily understood if I draw the sagittal cut okay sagittal section if I draw the that is what we get in an XLA soft tissue in a lateral view. Okay. Lateral view. Uh, frontal sinus, then the skull base. And you have the clivus coming at the skull base. Actually, this uh, retropharyngeal space extends from skull base. At the, uh, above, it is a skull base. And uh, we have a C1 here. Then C2. Vertebra C3. C4. C5. C6. C7, uh, T1, T2, T3 and it continues. Okay. Uh, anteriorly you have the hyoid bone and all the stuff along with that. The uh, trachea and the air column. And just in front of the uh, vertebra. I already told you C1, C2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, C7, T1, T2, T3 and it continues downwards. So just in front of the vertebral body you have the pre-vertebral fascia. And in front of that see. This alar fascia divides that into two. So, buccopharyngeal membrane will be in front of that. And this alar fascia actually comes and fuses with the uh, buccopharyngeal membrane. Uh, anywhere between this uh, T1 to T4. Okay. This comes and fuses with the buccopharyngeal membrane. So, what will be the uh, result of that? This ALA fascia is there uh, at any time between T1 to uh, T4, or sometimes we call it as up to T6. Okay. So, this uh, true retropharyngeal space ends at the level where this alar fascia fuses with the uh, buccopharyngeal membrane. Okay, so this uh, coming to the true uh, retropharyngeal space, it extends from skull base up to the level between T1 to T4. But this uh, danger space extends into the uh, medial stenum. That is, it extends into the posterior mediastinum and ends up to the level of uh, ends at the level of diaphragm. Okay, uh, this area you have to be very clear. Retropharyngeal space extends uh, from skull base up to the level of T1 to T6, and it divided by this alar fascia into a true retropharyngeal space and a danger space. True retropharyngeal space uh, ends at the level of T1 to T4 or T6, where this alar fascia comes and meets the visceral fascia but the uh, danger space goes extends up to the diaphragm through the posterior mediastinum that is why infection from the neck can easily go into the uh, chest through this danger space okay so if there is an abscess correction this retropharyngeal space will bulge as we have seen in the x-ray 
and uh, behind that we have the uh, pre-vertebral space which I will explain later. Okay, that is another yet another space. So, coming to the boundaries, what are the boundaries of this uh, retropharyngeal space? It extends from the skull base up to uh, T1 to T4 and again danger space goes up to the diaphragm in the posterior mediastinum and anteriorly you have the macropharyngeal membrane, posteriorly prevertebral fascia and laterally there is a carotid sheath. Okay, and what are the contents, contents of this? So, now you know the uh, boundaries, I already explained that. Actually, what is the use of this uh, retropharyngeal space? An abscess occurs because there is a retropharyngeal space. What is the use of this? Actually, this retropharyngeal space, think a scenario where there is no retropharyngeal space at all. So, during each swallowing, what will happen? Each swallowing, this esophageal contents will come and grate over the vertebra. Isn't it? All the vertebral muscles. And actually this retropharyngeal space acts as a bursa, potential space on which this uh, pharynx and esophageal musculature can move while swallowing. So that is a very good decision uh, of the creator. Okay. But if there is an infection in this space, that will lead to retropharyngeal abscess. So you know the boundary. Then what are the condens? What are the structures which causes an infection? Okay. Condens. Condens. For that, I already told you, here is a uh, hyoid bone is coming. So, this retropharyngeal space we can divide into a suprahyoid and an infrahyoid compartment. Okay. And suprahyoid compartment contains both lymph nodes plus fat. Lymph node and fat. Which lymph node? The retropharyngeal lymph node. All these retropharyngeal lymph nodes are always medial to the internal carotid artery. And there are two groups of retropharyngeal lymph nodes. A medial group and a lateral group. Okay. Again, these lymph nodes are divided into a medial group and a lateral group. And this medial group uh, is more common uh, seen in children. And as it goes to adulthood, this medial group atrophies. So that is why acute retropharyngeal abscess is mainly caused by retropharyngeal lymphadenitis in children. So the commonest cause of acute retropharyngeal abscess in children is retropharyngeal lymphadenitis. Whereas the commonest cause of acute retropharyngeal abscess in adult is a penetrating trauma. It is an MCQ. Okay. So because this medial uh, and lateral group of lymph nodes are more prominent in children, the commonest cause of an acute retropharyngeal abscess in children is retropharyngeal lymphadenitis. And this medial group, uh, it uh, atrophies uh, as it as, uh, goes to adulthood. And the lateral group, it is a named group of lymph node, which is called the node of Rubier. Okay. As the node of Rubier or the lateral group of lymph nodes uh, persists throughout adulthood, this is this can be a site of uh, metastasis in case of uh, head and neck malignancies. Okay, so the medial group atrophies uh, in childhood as childhood uh, progresses, and the lateral group or the node of Rubier this will persist throughout adulthood and can be a site of metastasis in case of uh, head and neck malignancy. And also, this node has got a relation with uh, one of the uh, prevertebral muscles, mainly the longus coli. Okay, so if you take a uh, CT or MRI, you can see that this medial group of lymph node are anterior to the uh, longus coli and this lateral group is always ventral to longus coli. And use the normal size, we take it as 1 cm or less is taken as normal in case of radiology in a case of uh, uh, lymph node. Okay, so the... Uh, we are talking about the content of the retropharyngeal space. Content, uh, in deciding content, we can divide this into suprahyoid and infrahyoid compartment. 
So in the suprahyoid compartment mainly include the lymph nodes and the fat. And the size of lymph node should be 1 cm less in normal cases. And the medial group is always anterior to the longus colon and lateral is ventral to the longus colon. And in the intrahyoid compartment contains only fat. Okay, you got it? So intrahyoid, fat, suprahyoid, lymph node and fat. And in the danger space is always contains only fat. There is no lymph nodes in that. It contains only fat. And in CT MRI, so if you take uh, CT MRI in that, unless it is uh, uh, widened in a case of abscess or any other conditions, there will only fat will be there. So the main content will be fat in case of fat uh, attenuation in case of CT and MRI. And this uh, danger space is uh, affected in non-nodal diseases because it contains no retropharyngeal or no lymph nodes at all. Okay, so suprahyoid compartment contains lymph node and fat and the infrahyoid compartment contains only fat. Okay, and that is a content. And next is the relations. What are the relations? From these two uh, diagrams, you can very well tell the relations. So lateral relation, there is a carotid sheath and uh, uh, it's also laterally, it is related to the parapharyngeal space, isn't it? Posteriorly, it is related to the prevertebral space and inferiorly, uh, it can go up to the diaphragm through the posterior mediastinum. So all these are uh, important in the spread of infection. So from the neck, the infection can spread very easily to the chest and to the posterior mediastinum when the danger space is affected. Laterally, carotid sheath and also the retropharyngeal space and also the masticated space, parotid space, all are seen in the lateral relation. Okay. So that is regarding this retropharyngeal space. It is a space between the buccopharyngeal fascia and the prevertebral fascia. And it is divided by the ala fascia into a true retropharyngeal space and the danger space extending from skull base up to this uh, true space ex uh, extends between T1 to T6 and the danger space is extending up to the diaphragm through the posterior mediastinum. And the laterally related to the carotid sheath, to the paraphangeal space, the masticated space, parotid space, etc. And uh, it contains mainly the suprahyoid compartment, mainly lymph nodes and fat and the uh, intrahyoid compartment contains solely fat. Okay. And uh, in any case of neck, uh, neck pain, it is better to evaluate retropharyngeal space also because any infections or cervical lymphadenitis, any area affection of this space can present as a neck pain, especially in pediatric age group. And also, the, the because of the spread, very high chance of spread of infection into the mediastinum. And mediastinitis is very a danger, um, highly complicated and it, there is increased chance of mortality and morbidity if the uh, mediastinum is involved. So that also you have to keep in mind, right? So this, this much you have to study in case of retropharyngeal space.